In this video, I'm gonna teach you three super simple yet rock solid ways to protect yourself against and win those dreaded PayPal chargeback disputes. Now, a lot of people aren't talking about this, so it's time to reveal the secret sauce. Let's get to it. What's going on guys, Adam Ivy, AdamIvy.com. As always, I appreciate you joining me yet again for another video. Now this video is gonna be incredibly important to all of you guys that deal with digital goods. Whether you be a graphic designer, whether you be a music producer, or songwriter that deals with uh, reference vocals, anything that you're selling online, drum kits for instance, if you're going through PayPal for anything, you're gonna to need to go get a pen and paper or get your uh, phone ready to take some notes. Now, as you're getting ready to take notes, I wanna take a second to thank everybody who's been engaging in my videos, whether it be a recent video or my old videos. I appreciate you all nonetheless. You've been leaving those comments, you've been smashing that thumbs up button, and you've been subscribing over here. Uh, you've been hitting that subscribe button, you've been hitting that little bell icon so you're the first to know when I upload new videos like this, and you're helping the channel grow. You're part of the channel family, as I've been referring to you guys as. Uh, when you hit that bell icon, you become a BFF, uh, and I do genuinely appreciate it. I'm not going to take a whole lot of time. Um, if you want to connect with me on Instagram, I'll put that information on the screen now. And as always, all of my contact information, including what I use to shoot these videos, is going to be in the description box below. I thank you guys for joining me. I hope you keep rocking with me. Now, like I said in the intro, this video is going to be all about chargebacks, protecting yourself against them, winning a chargeback dispute, uh, and it's all through PayPal. So if you don't know what a chargeback is, I'll run you through the quick and dirty explanation. So a chargeback is when someone who bought something from you claims that they didn't buy it from you, claims that you didn't fulfill your end of the bargain, or even claims that someone fraudulently used their card or, or their account. So to give you a quick example of how this usually works, uh, I'll just run you through a basic scenario scenario that a lot of my music producer friends can relate to. Uh, if you haven't, you know, God bless you. It's something that none of us ever want to deal with, but if we've been in the game long enough, you certainly will run across it uh, at some point. So for this example, let's say that you're selling beats online. You're selling instrumentals, something that a lot of us can relate to. You're selling beats for $25 and someone buys three of them for $75. Easy math. They tell PayPal three days later that they didn't authorize that charge, or maybe they call their bank directly and say, hey, I didn't buy that, uh, I need my money back. Well, PayPal isn't really good with uh, asking questions before they just take action. Um, I love you, PayPal, but at the same time, you have a lot of room, of, uh, room for improvement in this regard. What PayPal will then do is take the money out of your account sight unseen. Let's say that $75 is already spent, you needed it for a phone bill. Uh, I know a lot of you guys can relate to this as soon as you get the money. A lot of times as independent music producers, we need it for something, whether it be rent, whether it be that phone payment, whether it be keeping the internet on, which we absolutely need it for as part of our business. So this particular asshole tells PayPal that uh, I never authorized that charge. PayPal will immediately file a charge back through the system. There's a process, but it's very easy. It's like, really don't have to show any proof. You just say, I didn't, I didn't buy that. Uh, and then PayPal will take the money right out of your account, like I just mentioned. Um, that From there, it's up to us as the creator, as us as the business owner, to prove that we did deliver it, uh, on our end of the promise and that we did you know, supply them with whatever they purchased, whether it be beats, drum kits, graphic design services, whatever. Uh, this really relates to a lot of non-tangible goods. It does also absolutely relate to um, physical products, but this video is particularly is for digital products. Now, what PayPal does from there is they notify you of the chargeback. You have X amount of days to respond and kind of plead your case. Uh, it's like a very skewed justice system. Um, it's very easy to lose chargebacks as a content creator because a lot of times the digital thing, it's really hard to grow legs. It's really hard to state your case when there's nothing physical. You know, there's this, this cup, like if I sold this cup to you, and then you'd then have the cup, I have a tracking number and all that stuff. So it's it's easier to track this than it is this. Idea, music. Um, so PayPal, a lot of times, um, rules in the favor of the buyer, which is absolutely unjust. It's absolute bullshit when it comes to you being ripped off. Now that's the quick and dirty aspect of this. If you're watching this video, you might be dealing with this as we speak, or this might be a fear that you should genuinely be concerned about in your business because revenue in, it should stay revenue in. It should rotate and build the business. Once you're getting orders, especially when you're getting a significant amount of orders, let's say that you're doing uh, 10 beats a day at $25 is uh, $250. Well, imagine if you were getting multiple chargeback backs each week, that's really a game and a lot of time that you just don't have to be, to be chasing money that is yours after all from people that are 
let's just say a little bit, a little bit less than honest. So I'm gonna run through these three things very quickly. So I need you to take notes. If you need to watch this video over and over again, uh, absolutely do so. Protect yourself, people. Uh, don't be taken advantage of. I'm also going to write a full blown article, a blog article that will be up eventually. I say eventually, uh, I have a backlog of things I'm actually working on uh, screensavers back here right now, but I'm getting the blog articles ready for the adamivy.com posts. Um, and I'm gonna go into more depth in that post, um, but this video will be more than enough content um, to really protect yourself. Now, like I said, three things that I recommend you do every single time you get a sale. I don't care if you get one sale a week or 20 sales a day. It doesn't take long. Don't be lazy, protect yourself. The first step is very easy. It's very simple. It's a common sense type tactic, but it's contact them directly via email. I want you to type up a couple different templates that you can copy and paste into an email, thanking them directly, but asking them a question. Something along the lines of, and I'm just freestyling off the top of my head, uh, it would be, you know, hey, I really appreciate you buying this beat for me. I don't know if you saw the other beats that I uploaded. Um, what made you buy this beat? You know, what? when is the project coming out? Ask them something to get them to respond. This is gonna show that they're, they intended on buying the beat, they intended on buying the digital product. Uh, so if you're a graphic designer and you did a design for someone, ask them what they think about it. Get that verbal, you know, through email, it's not verbal, but get that response showing that they had intent to buy, showing that they liked what they received, showing that they interacted with you. When defending yourself against the chargeback, think of it as going to court, small claims court, civil court, what have you. Uh, it might only be $25, it might be $20, it might be $2,000. You gotta protect yourself and you gotta show evidence. You gotta give them a body of proof to show that whatever they're claiming, this person says, oh, I didn't buy that. This person says, oh, that wasn't me. Well. How was it not you when you emailed me back and we talked a little bit about what you're working on as far as the project and all that stuff? Second of all, there's another layer to this tactic and that's rapport, that's building that little bit of communication, that's building that friendship, that bond with somebody. Think about it. If you reach out with a very friendly email, I'm not talking generic, you have to personalize. So if somebody bought two beats from you, say, oh, you know, that beat was one of my favorites. I, I'm, I really appreciate you supporting me. Um, that's gonna build a little bit of rapport. A person's gonna be a lot less likely to do a chargeback on you when you had communication with them. Now, granted, will everybody respond to these? Will everybody, if somebody had that malice in them to begin with, if somebody had this, this intention to begin with, they might not respond. But these are tactics that you have to put in play and do your part to show that you're really trying to have some communication with these people. And to go deeper into the thought I just started, when you're talking to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, when you reach out, when you take a little bit of extra effort, you're giving them that customer service. You're giving that, them that experience, right? A person that might rip you off and is on the fence with it, or let's say that they have a phone bill that's due and they're just broke, they invested in themselves, but the only option they see you know, uh, uh, feasible is by doing a chargeback and getting that money back. I know it's not right, and a lot of times that money's held up, so it doesn't really work for them in the long run anyway. But if they've already talked to you, if they've built that rapport with you, if they say, this guy's a really nice guy, that moral conscience might, conscience might come into play. And they say, you know what, I'm not, and, and you know, you could say, Adam, that's some hippie shit. Uh, this is not how the world works. Uh, trust me, this is how the world works for a lot of people. If a person feels like you care about them, uh, they're not gonna rip you off as easily as somebody that's like, oh, they're just doing a business. It, it's the psychology of it, guys. You really have to put that into play. And that's why I always suggest the first step being that customized email to try to get a response and do a little bit of a little bit of conversation with your customers, every single one of them. All right, so that was step one. Now, step two in protecting yourself and winning a pending chargeback against you is showing a digital receipt of proof of delivery of the good that you sold this person that is claiming that you didn't. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Adam, I already sent them to beat via email. Isn't that good enough? Well, unfortunately, in this day and age, it's not whether you're sending a design, whether you're sending a, a beat or a drum kit or whatever digital, an email's not good enough unless you have a digital receipt that kicks back through a third party service. I like WeTransfer. WeTransfer is free up to two gigs. You could send pretty much anything you want uh, and they're gonna kick back uh, not only an email saying that you sent it to them, but they're also gonna send you an additional follow-up email when that person downloads it. It's gonna go right to their email. It's gonna say, you know, uh, ABC at AOL, that's funny. ABC at AOL.com downloaded whatever you sent them. You could take a screenshot of that, you know, print screen or whatever, and also include that in your chargeback uh, evidence per se. And that's gonna show that the person, oh, side note, side note, I have to put this in there. Always send the digital goods to the email associated with that PayPal account. So many times people lose chargebacks because, uh, you know, 
let's just, I'll use my name, adam at AOL.com sent me payment, but then they send you a quick message and say, hey, whatever, uh, send it to the studio. Like they always try to use some deceptive shit. Send it to the studio, I have a session there. And then they'll give you a different email. If you send the goods to a different email, it's way easier for them to win. So don't do that. Say, hey, I'm sorry, this is my policy. I send it to the email that is associated with who paid me. And from there you can forward it or do whatever you have to do, but this is how I do it. I do things. Now, if you use a service like Airbit, I'm not associated at all with Airbit, though I have used it in the past, that works fantastic. A lot of people out there use it. Uh, if you're at Airbit and wanna talk to me about uh, promoting your services on my channel, contact information is in the description box below. But anyway, guys, when you use a service like Airbit, it's all automated, right? So you have a store uh, and that's why you pay the monthly fee to use them as a service is because your store is available online. There's different purchasing options for your customers. There's different listening options for your customers and they can buy it directly from your store with instant downloadable access, right? It's sent directly to them uh, and you get a receipt from that through Airbit. So shout out to Airbit for having that backend capability, which you can also use as a digital receipt in the chargeback process. So I really hope you guys are taking notes. I'm, I'm, I'm dead ass serious. This is something that you need to understand and something that you need to implement in your business. I'm gonna recap step one is writing an email with some type of response, getting that correspondence going, getting that conversation going with your customer to the email that they paid from, to the email that you delivered to. Step two is having a digital receipt from sending them the product that they paid for. Now that can be through WeTransfer, that can be through any service that's gonna kick back and prove that they downloaded whatever it is that you sent to them. Now I hope you made it this far because step number three is that secret sauce that you've been waiting for. This is a completely unconventional, something that blew my mind when I found out about it through one of my friends and other people have been using it with immense success when it comes to these chargeback uh, disputes. That's sending them a physical product. Now I know that this sounds unconventional, it sounds counterintuitive, it sounds expensive to be quite honest, but it's not. This is going to be easy way to kind of solidify your win when it comes to a chargeback dispute. Now, before I explain this to you and give you all the details and run you through it, full disclaimer, uh, I have to say that because of legal reasons, none of these steps, whether it be individual or all three combined, are gonna give you a 100% chance of winning uh, the disputes. Obviously that's in PayPal's hands, but I will tell you this, that hands down, doing these three steps in conjunction, doing them all together with every single sale, it's gonna give you a ton of peace of mind. It's gonna work you through the uh, chargeback process way easier, way faster, and your chances of winning are like, I'm not gonna say airtight, but they're significantly higher. You're gonna get your money back a lot faster. Uh, and this is really gonna cover your ass. This is like bookkeeping on the back end. Now, like I said, step number three is sending your customer a physical product. It might not make sense at first, but think about it. One reason that us as sellers, we lose chargeback disputes via PayPal is we don't have any real proof besides maybe the, the digital receipt or even the email that we did business with this individual or that they received what we had sent them. But there's a weird loophole with PayPal on signatures and delivery confirmations in the physical world. Like physical world is a whole different animal. So what do you do? You go get some stickers made stickermeal.com. There's a bunch of different ones. Uh, I'll leave a couple of them in the description box below. I'm not affiliated with them at all. Um, have some stickers made with your logo or a saying that you say. Uh, have some cheap silicone wristbands. I'll put a link in the description box below to try to help you out with that too. Not affiliated. I'm not getting any kickback on that. Get something cheap made. Spend $100, $50, $20, whatever you can afford to get some physical products. Now, what do you do? You buy a stack of, of little mailer envelopes or maybe just a regular, you know, uh, standard size letter envelope and some stamps, or maybe not, because you're gonna have to go to the post office for this. And every single person that buys a digital product from you, you send them a thank you letter, uh, handwritten, or you could print something off and just sign it, thanking them for their business, because not only is it gonna be service after the sale, it's gonna save your ass, because this is why. You go to the post office, and it's so light that it's gonna be extremely uh, cheap to send. I think it's only gonna cost you between uh, like $1.30 to $2.50 maybe. And in the grand scheme of things, that's the cost of insurance to do this. So you send them the, the physical product and you require a signature. A, they're not gonna be expecting it. B, they're gonna to have to sign for it. C, you're gonna be able to show PayPal that you delivered something. Now, the buyer could say, well, they, they just sent me a sticker. No, 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 that's not in the conversation anymore you sent them something that they signed for. And if they said that they didn't buy anything from you, then why would they sign for something that you sent them? They're not gonna be expecting it. 
You don't send them an email telling them, be sure to expect the, uh, you know, stickers I'm about to send you. It's not like a promoted thing. You just do it. Now, if someone buys, let's say you're living in America and someone buys uh, a beat from you in France or whatever. I say France because I actually got ripped off from somebody in France uh, years ago. Um, you can still send them something, though it's going to cost you a lot more, so it might not be worth it. But when it comes to um, the overall sales, and it, let's say you're living in France and the majority of your customers are in America, this might not be the greatest tactic, so I would say stick to the first two, but go to your postal service and, and find out how much that would cost because a lot of times you can get postcard rates on uh, just anything and then a signature required signature is only like 35 cents more at least here in the state so just find out what you're dealing with now it's really that easy you can make it more complicated if you want to but it's all about communication it's all about proving your side of the case to paypal when you show them that you've been talking to the individual when you show them that you have a digital receipt for them downloading whatever you had sent them. And when you could show them that they signed, physically signed for something that was sent to their address, it's a lot easier. It's a lot more of an open and shut case to sh show PayPal like, yeah, you clearly bought that. You're not, you're not pulling the wool over my eyes. Now, like I said, if you're already in the middle of a chargeback dispute, I'm sorry, good luck. Hopefully you have at least one or two of the three things uh, covered to show PayPal, and I really hope you win. Uh, but when it comes to being a creator, when it comes to being a business owner, trying to build your brand, every dollar counts. So when bad people are ripping off good people, I just don't stand for it. And I really hope that these three steps protect you in the future. In fact, I know they will. So one more time, step one is confirmation and conversation via email. Step two is a digital receipt of some sort showing that they downloaded it, showing that it was delivered to their email that's associated with the PayPal account that you got paid through. And step three is a physical signature. Don't just ship it out via the USPS or shipping it out via mail uh, in your mailbox. You need to go to the post office and have them add signature required and just like that super simple super effective as far as protecting yourself as a creator protecting yourself as a seller through paypal i know it might be a little inconvenient depending on where you live depending on uh if the post office is you know a drive but it's an insurance policy what's more inconvenient losing a couple bucks and maybe like a half an hour hour of your time or losing 25 50 100 a thousand uh, and maybe that's a policy that you enact. You only do this for sales over $50. You know, it's up to you guys. I'm just here to try to help you protect yourself. Uh, and I wanna see you guys winning more chargeback disputes. And with that being said, I wanna know how many of you guys have made it this far in the video. So in the comments below, if you're still with me, type, I am protected. And as always, if you found any value in this video whatsoever, which I genuinely hope you have, all I ask for is that you smash the thumbs up button. Just, just smash, just once. If you do it twice, it kind of undoes what you did. So just once, but smash that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, I would genuinely appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Boom, it's just that little button, boom. While you're at it, if you want to become a BFF and part of the channel family here, click that bell icon to be notified anytime I upload a video just like this, because YouTube sometimes doesn't like to put these videos in people's subscription feeds. That's a whole different story for a different day. I want you to come follow me on Instagram and connect with me, leave a comment, send me a DM. Uh, you know, I love, connecting with all of you guys on there. It's a lot easier to just have conversations through pictures. I can see what you guys are up to. I can hear snippets of your music and see how you're building your brand. Especially when you guys ask questions, it's easier for me to kind of come through and uh, see what you've been up to. So all that information will be on the screen right now. As I mentioned earlier, all my contact information, including the Snapchat that I no longer use, will be in the description box below. And until next time, guys, you can find me at adamivy.com.